You know, if you want to be a mechanical engineer or civil engineer, or if you're already one, or if you're a lecturer or even a professor in this field, you have to use the correct and precise terms and phrases. Otherwise, you'll face many problems during writing your exam, your scientific papers, your working, your teaching, and whatever. Because the audience won't get what exactly you mean, and it would make misunderstanding all the time. For example, if you use deformation instead of deflection, I'm not saying it's totally incorrect, but it's not precise, you know. That's why it's vital to know the terminology of a science or a field that you're in it. And that would increase your self-confidence for a confident speech or presentation or whatever in your own field. So, in this short video, I'm gonna teach 30 basic phrases of mechanical engineering, which is, of course, usable for a civil engineer as well. And the rest phrases are coming in the next videos, so stay tuned and with me as well. I would start with vector, vector, then vector components, vector components, so suppose this is a vector and a vector basically could be broken into the components like this. So I would write down vertical component, vertical component and horizontal component. Also, we could sum up two or more vectors. For example, this is vector A and this is vector B. Vector A plus vector B equals vector R, which is called the resultant vector. Resultant. vector then I would write down force number seven mass number eight is solid mechanics solid mechanics which concentrates mostly on solids and not the fluids like gases or liquids then mechanics of materials mechanics of materials which I think uh, it's clear what it is. After that, I will write down stress. Stress. Which is the amount of force distributed over a specific surface area. So if the applied force is perpendicular to the mentioned surface, then it's called normal stress nor mal stress if it's parallel to the surface this one this uh, force i mean then it's called shear stress shear stress then i would say strain 
strain. You know, if you apply tensile stress on this ruler, for example, it will present elongation. A strain shows the elongation value over the initial length of the ruler or whatever, you know. Then Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio. You know, if you apply stress, for example, on a rod, it will elongate in this direction, but it gets thinner like in this direction. It's something quite logical, you know. So Poisson's ratio shows the ratio between the strain in this direction, which is called the transverse strain or the strain in, like in this direction which is called longitudinal strain so then i would write down the tensile test tensile test which is a test that puts a piece of a material under tensile stress to reach the relationship between the stress and strain of that material and the achieved curve is the so-called stress strain curve stress strain curve okay you know there there are engineering stress strain curve engineering stress strain curve for example like this okay and true stress strain curve true stress strain curve like this for instance okay like this yeah schematically okay in the engineering stress strain curve we suppose a constant cross-section area for measuring the stress However, in the true stress strain curve, the original cross section area is considered, which is, of course, smaller because the rod gets thinner and as the result, it shows larger stress. Okay. Okay, here in this curve, there is a point called yield point. I will write down yield strengths yield strengths before yield strengths the material shows elastic deformation elastic deformation But after exceeding this point, it shows plastic deformation. Plastic deformation. It means after this point, if you unload or you remove the load, the material won't come back to the same position. So before reaching the yield strength, the relationship of the stress and strain is linear and the slope of this line is called Young modulus or Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity. So I write down Young modulus.
Okay, this peak point is called ultimate strengths. Ultimate strengths. This area called strain hardening, strain hardening. And this area called necking, necking. So eventually the material gets ruptured somewhere. So this point called rupture, rupture. So this figure schematically could be assumed for a ductile material, ductile material like steel a ductile material presents rather a high plastic deformation after yielding on the contrary to the ductile material there is brittle material brittle material like glass for example their stress strain curve is something like this okay schematically of course as you can see they either show a very small plastic deformation or even just after yielding they immediately rupture okay the area under a stress strain curve until the yield point is the so-called Modulus of resilience, modulus of resilience. And the area under whole stress strain curve is actually the modulus of toughness, modulus. of toughness I already explained these two in this video in detail so you can watch it if you want to yeah as I already told I'll try to collect the most important vocabs and let's say the terminology of mechanical engineering which is usable for civil engineering as well in the next videos okay so please keep in touch and subscribe to this channel and yeah bye for now